So now you can actually use AI agents and AI bots to create and scaffold and set up projects from zero. For example, this tic-tac-toe was created from scratch using AI and all I had to do is actually run a CLI kind of command and it was able to create the full React project from scratch for me. And it's not only that, it's not only about React, it can create literally everything. For example, we created this full project on Python and it did actually generate all the particle requirement documents like the competitive analysis in here, for example, for the snake game in here or the sequential flow to the actual code in here from scratch, literally from scratch using just one CLI command. All right, let's go ahead and see how. So in the past couple of weeks, we've seen an absolutely amazing stuff coming in the GPT word and AI bots and particularly in the coding space. So there's actually a really, really awesome new tools starting with like the GPT engineer, which is kind of like an AI bot that can use GPT-4, GPT-3.5, or even the Llama from Facebook. And the crazy part about this one, it actually brings an absolutely amazing idea to the coding space, or more particularly to the engineering word. So this one allows you to particularly go ahead and actually just from a single prompt. So all you actually need to do is actually give it a single prompt in here as shown in the video. You give it like a specific prompt. If it just like go in here, screw this in here, you can either write it on, a, on the file or a single prompt in here. It's actually gonna generate for you as absolutely like a full project, like for Python, Node.js, React or anything. It's gonna generate for you a full project, fully working projects exactly with the requirements that you specified. There's the author one is actually meta GPT, which is has the same kind of like idea, but actually expands in the word of like engineering. So it kind of like allows you to have an AI agents in the word of kind of like engineering. So you'd like create your own company starting from like the CEO and the product managers to basically designers to, you know, the actual engineers. So all of those actually just like creates an AI agents for each role and it gives them particularly their own kind of like tasks, tasks to do from creating like a PRD design tasks. And eventually it's going to create for you the final repository, the final project. So let's look at the first one, the GBC engineer. So if you go down in here, of course, so it's pretty simple in here. There's already like a demo kind of like a tweet uh, showcasing like what it can do and what it's capable of. And when it comes to the user, it's pretty simple. So you've got two options. The first one is actually doing the, re the stable release option in here, which is just go ahead and actually install that using pip. So all you gotta do is just pip install GPT engineer in here and you're basically good to go. Or if you want the development version, of course, you need to go ahead and actually clone the repository we are currently in, you CD inside of that, you install pip, you do a bunch of stuff. So that's pretty good as well. The other very important part you need to make sure you do is actually export the open AI key. So you need to make sure you set the open AI key and you need to grab an open AI key. So you need to open up an account or just simply pay for the actual API, which is gonna be very, very cheap, like a 0.00 dollar. You can check out the pricing of GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo. But of course you need to make sure you explore that as an environment variable. And if you're actually on Windows, I would really highly recommend going ahead and checking the Windows readme in here because I'm on Mac, it's a lot simpler on Mac and Linux, but when it comes to Windows, it becomes a little heftier. And just as simple as that, you're actually good to go. Now, the way to actually run this one and actually use it, you need to go and actually create a folder, like whatever place folder that is, after install, of course, the GPT engineer using pip, and you need to create a file called prompt. After you're doing that, you actually go ahead and use the installed version, the GPT engineer version in here, you actually link it to the file you created that has the prompt like folder or sorry, the prompt file inside of it. And you need inside of the prompt file in here, you need to put exactly your prompt. So like exactly like what you want to generate, where's the projects and what you want the AI to generate for you. All right, pretty cool. So I already did that. I already installed the GPT engineer. I already did all the kind of prerequisite setups and everything. And here, I screw this in here. I already did a bunch of examples. One of them is this React application. So I created a folder with React up in here and I put inside of it a prompt file or a prompt file in here. And the prompt has my prompt. So what I want to hear, I, I want to build a simple tic-tac-toe game. I'm saying, oh, the game should have a good UI design in here where the main theme color is purple. Uh, no extra preference. I don't want any, any, any extra parentheses and I want it to use Vates and I want to like set up correctly the React project using Vates in here. Uh, also, I'm telling you like, oh, the TikTok Go game boards should be centered both vertically and horizontally in here. Uh, no extra functionality. It should be playable again with the computer AI. And the results were, 
it actually generated a workspace for us, a workspace folder. This is actually where you find your stuff. So if you look at the workspace, it actually generated an SRC for me. It has all the game files, which is pretty interesting and pretty impressive. I'm actually impressed, like impressed about this one. It created like a game board, it created um, the index in here, it created like a player, which is a class that actually just puts the mark and the type in here. It created like the square for the tic-tac-toe because you know, it's a bunch of square or squares actually put together in a grid. And here there's actually the AI. So you can actually implement the logic. For some reason, it didn't implement the logic. Maybe it had to explicitly, explicitly tell it to do so, but he actually did it in here. So you can, you've got the placeholder pretty much. So you can add whatever logic you would like to for the game AI. And eventually just, you know, the game board in here, just putting the squares together and the logic. But the bad thing about this one is actually the project. This is literally the project it generated. So it, it put a Vs file, but it put it like this way, but it didn't actually put a V configuration. So it didn't actually initialize a V project. It didn't put a package.json. It put the dependencies in here, how to install them and everything, but it didn't do the pre configuration for you. So what I had to do is actually copy this one, actually created uh, projects for it. So I went through V. I created the project myself. I did actually set up that actually I just I put in here the V projects. I did, you know, create the whole thing in here that you see inside of the tic tac toe react in here. Uh, for example, and actually put everything inside of that. So everything in here, I just I just did set up for me and I copied the SRC from the one inside of the workspace right over here. And of course, I did run the V server in here. So let's go ahead and see the results. There you go. So if you open up the server, we've got a board, it's basically centered in vertically and horizontally, which is pretty nice. If the theme in here is in purple, so it did that really well, it's actually using Tailwind. And let's see the function only. So if you click on here, it's starting with X, but it looks like the computer A is not working because it hasn't been implemented. So I have to click it myself. The second one, it just puts O and it keeps it that way. And if you just ever just like finish or something, there's no results, maybe because I haven't explicitly tell it to show any like winning or losing message or some, something like that. So it's not showing anything. So if you win or lose, regardless, it's not going to show you anything, it's just going to stuck like this, unless you go ahead and reload everything, you can just play it again. So for the experiment, for the sake of the experiment, because this has been generated using AI, and all the files were thought about using AI agent GPT four or 3.5, particularly, I mean, I'm pretty impressive. It's, it's, it's actually pretty good. So I'm going to leave the door open for you guys to just sit out and let me know down in comments below. But this one is pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, let's jump to the second one, the meta GPT. I'm really excited for this one, because it actually provides you with like the product requirement document, which is usually created by the product managers or the CEO or you know, the guy that wants the application to build for it. and including like designs, it just defined the tasks by itself. So it kind of like creates stories like small stories in here. And what are the tasks needed to achieve the the particularly like the product requirement documents in here and to create the application and eventually goes through and actually create the full application. So if you go down in here, there's a bunch of stuff. This is actually what the product requirement document looks like. The schematic in here that you can, you can see in front of you in here is in GPT for uh, the full go generated examples. It's gonna be around two dollars for you know for the full products, but usually it's gonna be like lower than that. All right, when it comes to the installation, that's basically the same thing. The only dependencies that changes actually you need to install an npm dependencies called Mermaid, which is gonna use Puppeteer. And this one is going to be used for generating the like PRDs and all the, you know, all the diagrams and schematics are going to be seen on this kind of like projects going to be generated using like mermaid in here, you can skip that part, of course, it's, it's like optional, but I would highly recommend setting this one as well. And it needs like Python 3.9 or plus for this one to run. And simply the last step in here, just go ahead and clone the repository, the meta GPT repo in here. And you simply just do oh, setup install in here, just go into Python setup install, and you're basically good to go just wait for the installation to be done. And you're actually good to go to get started using this one. All right, let's jump into it. So I already cloned the repo in here. I really recommend cloning the repo in here. So you can easily see what's actually going on. And inside of the configuration here, inside of the config.yaml, this is actually where you need to put your open API key for accessing the API, of course, for using GPC4. So if you open this one, you're going to put it inside of the open API key, and make sure you choose your open AI model. So you can choose 3.5 turbo if you want, or I would highly recommend going with the GPC4. So after everything is good to be started, you can just go in and see the inside of like, you know, where you've put your meta GPT in here where you cloned it, and you can do Python startup.py. And this actually 
the, the main Python file you need to run. And the other one, you give it the, the actual prompt that you need to run in here, which is like, oh, write a CLI snake game based on Pi game. So this just, just like an example, this is actually what I gave it. And once you hit enter, it's gonna start actually putting everything together. As you see in here, it started with like putting together a manager, like as you see in here, it, it kind of like an imaginary manager, it's called Alice, which is a product manager and it starts to write some PRDs in here for everything. And if like the original requirement, in it, which is pretty nice actually, is the boss wants you to write a command line interface, a CLI snake game based on Pygame. And if you just notice everything, it's actually gonna console log everything to basically the terminal so you can see it in action. So it starts like with the product goals in here, uh, like what is the particles, like create a fun and addictive snake game in here, provide a seamless and enjoyable gaming experience, uh, implement intuitive responsive controls. For example, in here, creates a small user stories in here and it starts like different stories as Chris in here. And the fun part about this one is actually it does a competitive analysis for the competitive analysis in here. It actually allows you to like, you know, check the other games online, for example, other snake games like the Python snake game, the Exensia in here or snake IO, all of those are actual like existing games online. Like I'm pretty sure I'm pretty familiar with the snake IO in here. So the fact that I actually brought those and it's actually doing analysis, like competitive analysis, and it's gonna create for you a chart. For example, here, this is actually the competitive analysis chart for you. It's gonna use the mermaid in here to create the chart for you. That's crazy. It's not only that, if you just follow it along, it's gonna have requirement analysis. It's gonna start, oh, I want to do some requirement pool here, like, oh, end game on collision with wall all itself. So it kind of generates the a requirement for itself and he takes those requirements and actually builds the application later on. And if you just continue looking into that, you're gonna find more and more like what are the files needed, the data structures, you start putting classes together and eventually it's gonna start like putting together, you know, all the files, it generates the files, it generates what, what are the required packages that needs to be installed, literally everything to the end. So quickly, if you jump back to it in here, you go inside of workspace, the snake game in here, and this is actually your projects. They have a snake game database, has been generated for you by that. You have a requirements for Pi game and click. You've got um, here for the resources, the amazing part is actually created all the resources and the charts for you. So if you go, we created a PDF for you. This is this is the competitive PDF, the competitive analysis in here for like, oh, what you need to promote, what you should expand, maybe improved, revaluate. If you wanna look at the data API design in here, like, you know, the, the games, or, you know, there's like start game, end game, all the classes designed in here uh, has one food and has one database in here. For for example, if you go to the sequential flow of how the application or how the game flows from like the main state when the game starts to generating food, gain high score and ending the game and updating the score. I mean, that's crazy. Like this was generated literally from scratch using an AI agent or a collection of AI bots put together to work collectively together. That is absolutely insane. And I mean, I'm, I'm afraid from the future, if what it comes to our jobs as developers, that is literally crazy. And the fact that it was actually able to generate the full projects here, if you go snake game, you're gonna find all the Python code. So from like the food, the database in here using SQLite, um, the game itself, and it has literally all the logic for the game in here, and the main Python in here to start the game with the, you know, Pi game. But the bummer is when I actually tried this one and installed all the dependencies inside of the requirements of TXT, and I tried to run this one, I got a pretty weird error. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but it wasn't running. Of course, I mean, maybe after some debugging, maybe I can go back to ChatGPT and actually provide that error and it can just, you know, go back into it back and forth and it can fix it and it could eventually work. But the fact that it wasn't able to work right away after you created the project and everything, um, not really that positive at the moment, but the fact that I was able to create everything, like literally the competition in here, the competitive analysis, uh, doing the research, the PRD and all that kind of stuff, plus it creates the full project for you, is just, is just mental. So anyway guys, thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in another interesting tutorial.